Italy is on total lockdown after coronavirus containment measures originally announced for the northern region were extended across the entire country. It is the most restrictive action to stop the spread of the virus taken outside of mainland China. So Charlie Dagada is in Rome right now. You know, China, it's an authoritarian regime. If they tell you stay home, you're on lockdown, people do it. It's a little tougher in Italy, though. What's it like on the ground? It's a lot different in Italy, but welcome to the Piazza del Popolo, the People's Square, but not today. Now, the prime minister has quoted Winston Churchill in saying this is Italy's darkest hour. If anybody wants an idea of what the future may hold, a worst case scenario, don't look any further than Italy. It was the news a nation already on its knees was dreading, but as the crisis deepened, it felt inevitable. The announcement triggered a rash of panic buying here in Rome as shoppers in masks swarmed supermarkets in fear of a countrywide lockdown. In a national address, Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte spelled it out in the starkest terms. We have run out of time, he said. We're having a growth in infection and deaths. The whole of Italy will become a protected zone. In essence, a quarantine of the entire country of 60 million people until next month. Here's what life under lockdown means. Travel across Italy severely restricted. All public gatherings of any kind strictly forbidden. Employees should work from home or prove to police why they're not. Restaurants and shops will shut their doors after dusk. The extension of the shutdown of schools and universities across the country. Violators risk up to three months in jail or fines of $225. The extreme measures after the number of cases jumped once again, now the most infections outside of China. More than 9,000 cases, 463 people have died. Officials in the hardest hit northern region say hospitals are on the verge of collapse. Well, the last past few days have been, uh, you know, pretty confusing. For this morning, we spoke with an 88-year-old with pre-existing conditions, Giorgio Pena, who's been stuck inside his house since the original shutdown. Right. Are you scared? Yes, I am scared. I mean, who is not scared about dying? Everybody's scared about dying. Okay, so this is pretty drastic. Um, it's There's going to be a lot of fallout. We talked about the business or financial implications. Do authorities believe that this is worth it, that it's going to work? Well, I think the authorities, especially the prime minister, they may be looking at numbers that we're not even aware of. But yes, I mean, the projections are there. And this is the reason they've uh, enacted these what might be well, not what might be considered, which are extreme measures. Certainly every Italian that we've been speaking to says, yeah, they weren't expecting this, although they were dreading it. The um, uh, the situation in the north, quarantining 16 million people seemed extreme in itself. Now quarantining the entire country. I can tell you personally, um, I, I got to go back to the, the, the UK for for a couple of reasons. Uh, British Airways uh, has canceled their flights here, so I'm going to have difficulty getting out. That would be the same case for all kinds of foreigners. They're being restricted from going from one place to another. You know, work has been canceled, school has been canceled. Imagine this scaled up to the United States. There are 60 million people here. You know, this is a westernized country. country. It's a democracy. This isn't China. Um, and they're dealing with this. So this is, these absolutely are extreme measures. And it, they are decisions that would not have been taken lightly. I mean, Milan, especially, you know, the financial capital of the north, uh, shutting down that area, the industrial uh, uh, region of the north, shutting down Venice, now shutting down the rest of the country. Yeah, of course it's extreme. And why? Because they're dealing with numbers that they can't control. They're just trying to cut down the spread of this. And, you know, you, you do something like this and you're bound to upset people. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to, uh, you know, have a sense of where the problems are going to bubble up. But we're learning now about an Italian prison that basically erupted over coronavirus restrictions, protests outside of a prison in Rome. Um, is there a fear that this nationwide lockdown could lead to unrest or, I don't know, maybe even worse, maybe violence? Well, cer certainly in some regions, when it comes to the prisons especially, there, there are a couple of reasons that they're concerned about that. First of all, they've closed down visitation rights. Okay, so whenever you have a, an institution where you've got a lot of people gathered together, which is why they closed down places like schools, shut down universities, shut down any gatherings, 
They banned weddings and funerals. How extreme is that? So, of course, they don't want any introduction of the virus to a place like a prison. And that is why you've seen the unrest in the prisons. In addition to that, there are concerns within institutions like prisons where they're saying, well, wait a minute, how are we going to be protected from this? So uh, over general terms, general society, you know, they're, 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 they're not going to be revolting and not for long. They're not angry about this. I think Italians are very sanguine about the situation. I think they're looking at what's going on here. And the priority is let's stop the spread of this by any means necessary. A lot of people are asking, why has Italy been so hit? Hard, so have, have, has borne the brunt of this outside of China. And what can we do to stop this? So, you know, we're only day one into this nationwide restriction, this nationwide quarantine. Generally speaking, by whatever means uh, necessary, they're willing to undergo these restrictions in order to stop the spread of this virus, not just here, you know, but around the world. All right, Charlie, thank you so much.